Perfect. So, uh, welcome everyone. Today we are going to talk about how we can uh, consume an hosted Azure hosted API or a middle tier API in SharePoint framework the right way. So, let's start setting the context. Let's say that you have a SharePoint framework web part and you want to consume SharePoint Online or Microsoft Graph or any other third party API from within that SharePoint framework web part. And you want to do that not directly in the client side code in SharePoint Framework, but you rather want to use a backend API or a middleware API, which will be the middleware between your SharePoint Framework web part and the actual backend API. Why? Why would you do that? Well, because it is a more solid solution. Because, for example, if you want to run a background process, you can do. And even if the user will cross the browser, your background process will keep on working in the uh, middleware service. It is more versatile because you can have background task running. It is more scalable because you can rely on a backend infrastructure like Azure. You have a better governance uh, because you can do monitoring, for example, with application insights of what's going on in your middleware API while consuming the backend API. And you can also have a better and more granular management of the permissions because rather than having to grant specific permissions to SharePoint Framework to consume the uh, API you want to use, you can just give those permissions to your middleware API so that you have a more granular control from a security point of view. When you, when you do that, in uh, SharePoint Framework, of course, you also need to take care of security because that's a fundamental component of your architecture. So how can you manage uh, the security and how can you make it uh, to uh, being able to consume a backend API, as I said, like SharePoint Online, Graph, or any third-party API on behalf of the user identity? We need to find a proper way to do that. Well. We have seen people using a pattern which I would clearly say, I would like to clearly say it is a wrong pattern, which is generating the access token to consume SharePoint online or graph or whatever else inside the client side code of SharePoint framework, and then sharing that access token with the middleware API. That's wrong, don't do that. The right way of doing what we are talking about is to rely on the on behalf of flow, which is available through Azure Entra ID, also known as Azure Active Directory previously. So uh, what is the on behalf flow? The on behalf flow is a flow that allows you and your applications to get a token on behalf of a user so that when you get that specific token, you will be able to consume a backend API providing a token to the target API, which will include the information about who is the user in the front end uh, willing to consume that API. This is really powerful scenario because it allows you to act on behalf of a user, even if you are in a middleware or backend infrastructure. Just to give you an idea, this is what happens when you use the OBO flow or the on behalf of flow. You have an application, which could be, for example, your SharePoint framework web part. Your SharePoint framework web part will send a request to a middleware API, which is something that we will dig into uh, really shortly. When you get to the middleware API providing your access token with your uh, information about your identity, that middleware API will provide to the Microsoft Identity Platform, so uh, to the uh, Entra ID and points to get a token, will send a request to get an OBO token. And in that request, the application, the middleware service will include the access token provided by the user at front-end level, as well as the credentials of the middleware API. So the client ID and client secret, or the client ID and the certificate of the middleware API. The Microsoft Identity Platform will return to the middleware API a new access token, which will be created in order to being able to consume the backend service, which can be SharePoint, Online, Graph, or anything else, on behalf of that specific user. And as such, the middleware API will get back the response and will be able to provide the actual result or action to the end user. From a permission grant point of view, 
you know that whenever we consume an API through Azure Entry ID, we also need to grant proper permissions to the application willing to do that. Well, with the OBOflow, we don't have an interactive permission grant from an end user point of view because the actual subject which is consuming the uh, backend API is your middleware, is not directly SharePoint framework. As such, in order to have the grant of those permissions, we have three options. One is to configure a property in Azure uh, Entry ID for your application, which is called known client applications, through which you declare the applications which will be allowed to do that uh, with your, uh, with your uh, application registered in Entry ID. You can do the pre-authorized applications using another uh, setting still in the manifest of the Azure Entry ID application, which is the pre-authorized application uh, section of the manifest, or if you provide an admin consent for your application registering entry ID, well, that admin consent, uh, being a, a consent made by an admin, a tenant admin, will implicitly also grant uh, the permission to your application to do or to use uh, the uh, OBO flow. So let me move uh, to the demo and let me explain you how it works uh, step by step. First of all, and just for the sake uh, of completeness, this is the sample that I'm going to show you. You can already find it in the adoption.microsoft.com site under the sample solution gallery. And today is the very first one you can see in the home page because it is fresh new, but you can just search for it, searching for middleware, for example, or you can find the link, uh, I guess, in the chat. Now, in Azure Enter ID, in my target tenant, I have registered an application which I will use uh, to implement this flow. The application is a regular Entry ID application, and in the API permissions, I decided to give my application the permission to read the sites and the user, and to read all the sites from SharePoint Online point of view. This application is also exposing an API, so it does have an endpoint that can be consumed by another uh, subject, which will be SharePoint Framework, as long as there will be the middleware.consume permission for this specific uh, application ID. That said, let's move to the demo and see how it works first of all, and then we can dig into the code. This is just a very simple web part for the sake of explaining you what's going on. I can click on a button and I will be able to consume a backend uh, API through a middleware API in order to get via Microsoft Graph who the user is, so the UPN of my user, as well as the title of the site in which I am, again, using the middleware in between. How does it work? Well, in SharePoint Framework, sorry, wrong Visual Studio, in Visual Studio Code, I have my solution and I have configured in the uh, package solution.json file that my SharePoint Framework solution requires to being able to consume this API with this permission scope, the middleware.consume that we have just seen in Entry ID, in the app in Entry ID. Then in the web part, we rely on the uh, out-of-the-box capability of SharePoint Framework to create a secure client, to con HTTP client, to consume an external API. Specifically, we use the AAD HTTP client factory object of the SharePoint Framework context to get a client for our API. Notice that this is exactly the UDQ URI of the app that I registered in Azure Entra ID. With this client created, I simply provide it to a React component together with a couple of information that I will explain you later. And in the React component, whenever I will click on the button to consume my middleware API, I simply use that client, that AAD HTTP client, to make a POST request to my target API, so to an endpoint that I created and that I will show you uh, shortly. And I will simply provide a request which will have in the body of the request a JSON object with the tenant name and the site in which I am right now. Under the cover, if we look at that, SharePoint Framework, if I press F12 here, will make a request, let's do it again, will make a request to my target endpoint providing the payload, the relative site URL, and the tenant that I'm using. And in the response, I will get back the information. Now, what is really interesting is that right now, and I'm showing you just for the sake of explaining you what's going on, but you shouldn't rely on that on a daily basis. Here you have an authorization header, which will include a bearer token. If I will dig into this token, again, just to explain you what's going on, this token targets the ID of my API. This GUID is precisely 
the unique ID of my application running here, and it declares that I have the middleware consume permission for my user. And here you can see my preferred username. Perfect. Now on the middleware layer, we have an ASP.NET minimal API, which will simply rely on out of the box libraries provided by Microsoft and specifically on the MSAL, the Microsoft Authentication Library, so that in my minimal API, I have a post action that I provide called consume with OBO. And in this one, first of all, I verify using uh, the uh, out of the box functionalities of .NET that the request that I'm getting in does have the proper permission scope that I want to have for any request that I need to serve so that I can guarantee that I will only provide the result of my endpoint to those requests with a proper access token with a proper permission scope in the access token. This is based on a few settings that you can have in the uh, application settings like for example we need to declare the target tenant the client id the audience we are looking for and of course we will need the credentials which are well hidden right here uh, for security reasons and when i do that once i have validated the token i can just extract without touching it and without looking into it but i can just extract from the request that i get the access token that i've got from sharepoint framework and using a utility function which will rely on MSAL, I can make a non behalf of flow dance with Azure Enter ID in order to build a client, confidential client application, confidential because I'm using a client ID and the client secret. And I will provide an assertion which will be based on the token provided by the user. And as such, I will be able to acquire a token on behalf of, which means please give me a new token which we, I will use to consume SharePoint Online or Graph on behalf of the current user. Let me put a breakpoint here just for the sake of completeness and let me call the API one more time. So let me refresh this page and let me make another request. Here we are. Here we can get the OBO token. And if we look again, just for the sake of explaining you what's going on, you don't need to do that on a daily basis. This token will give me the permission to consume this new audience, which is SharePoint Online now in my target tenant. The app consuming is this one, so the uh, middleware API that I registered. I can still see that I'm going to consume SharePoint Online on behalf of my user, as you can see right here, but now the permissions that I have are those for SharePoint Online. Okay, by doing this, we can easily configure the permissions that we want to have at the middleware layer without the need to grant a bunch of permissions to the SharePoint framework client, meaning that we will give those permissions to all of the SharePoint framework with parts and components running in our tenant. But we rather just grant SharePoint framework to consume our middleware API. And then we have a granular uh, management of the permissions at the middleware uh, layer. This is the right way of consuming a middleware API from SharePoint Framework in a secure way and on behalf of the currently connected user. That said, again, you will find the whole source code of the solution on GitHub and in the sample gallery. And thank you and back to you, Bo. Thank you.